Now, in terms of aircraft development, Honda is perhaps best known for its successful Honda Jet product. However, the company has also had an EV toll in development for the past few years, which notably has been a relatively secret program. However, here at the show, we've got some more information forthcoming. AIN caught up with Honda to learn more about its upcoming EV toll. It's a great pleasure to be here with you at the Dubai Air Show for what I understand is Honda's first time exhibiting its EV toll here. Yep. Tell me about the progress and the milestones over the last few years for you. Yeah, um, we actually announced our program back in 2021. And since then we uh, have been in a kind of stealth mode so far. But uh, we have uh, made a, a big progress of our program. And so we thought that this is a good timing for us to uh, showcase our progress of the research. And the last five years we've been done, as I showed here, the subscale model test vehicle. And we came up with the concept of the cabin design. And also we are you know, being in process of manufacturing the, the full scale vehicle. This is the kind of uh, bigger size of this vehicle. And it's a flight demonstrator of our design. Perfect. So the subscale flight demonstrator, one third of actual scale? It is, yeah, one third. Talk me through some of the milestones that you've been reaching during the flight test campaign so far. Where okay. has that been taking place? Well, the, the test itself is uh, um, done in California. Um, our, our main uh, test facility is uh, in San Luis Obispo County. And uh, we have the test field to demonstrate this uh, vehicle. And this vehicle is specifically for the flight control um, verification of our uh, uh, control flows. And we've done maybe more than 400 uh, flight tests. And we've achieved the uh, power lift case and the transition case. So we are now confident uh, in moving forward with this design and the full scale test. So you've made the transition to from hover mode to forward flight. It's, with, it's with not the full transition yet, but because of the limitation of the vehicle. But we are kind of confident uh, we can achieve the, the transition in full scale. And why the decision to have this one third scale scale technology demonstrator before moving forward to a full scale model or prototype, I suppose? Well, the, the flight dynamics of this vehicle is so much complex. Mm -hmm. And we did uh, wind tunnel testing, but the flight envelope of this vehicle is huge. You have so many parameters and we need to model uh, the entire uh, uh, aerodynamics. And so this is a really a necessary process for us to verify our flight dynamics is really um, predicting the, the real phenomena. And now we are kind of confident in doing this. Now, now it's time to move for you know, shifting to the full scale. So the, the configuration has largely sort of been set in stone to then move up to the scaled, yeah, this the scaled model. Yes, so the, this configuration is chosen for the, the verification of our technology. It's a lift and cruise uh, configuration, which can kind of be easy for us to uh, decouple the lifting uh, mode and the cruising mode. And so now this, uh, the technology we uh, developed around this configuration needs to be verified through the flight test uh, of the full scale. So exciting stuff, now we're moving on to the full scale. Yeah, it is. Is that the initial version currently in the build process? Is yeah, that... it's, as you see in the last part of this movie, yeah. uh, we are now manufacturing our uh, full scale vehicle in uh, our uh, facility. And it's, it's going to be built by the end of this year. And the uh, flight test is expected to happen next March. Mm -hmm. March 2026, 2026, begin yeah. 26, beginning of flight testing. Will that just initially be the one vehicle or are you planning multiple vehicles well, doing at, some at the moment, flight? Yeah, at the moment, this is, uh, as I mentioned, the flight control verification vehicle. So we are building one uh, big uh, vehicle at the moment. And will that be remotely piloted or will that be crewed? It's, it's remotely piloted, yeah. yeah. And what are the benefits of that as opposed to having a human in the vehicle? Well. Human in vehicle, you of course have to, you know, verify everything. Right? It's a human uh, life is very uh, precious. So before moving to the pilot to be on board, we want to make sure everything is perfect. And the uh, remotely controlled vehicle is the perfect uh, the test case for us to do, kind of, going the boundary 
and then see if that works, uh, even that you know, uh, critical situation. That's, that's really great. And obviously Honda's got a strong heritage of building aircraft. The Honda Jet comes to mind. What lessons or insights are you able to leverage from that program to building another aircraft such as this? Wow, that's a great question. But from the experience of uh, Honda Jet, we learned a lot about the type certification, how important it is, how critical the, all the redundancy or safety aspect is considered during the uh, even the research phase. So we um, use those kind of leverage uh, or knowledge into our, even in our research phase. And by the time we decide the, the type certification, we, we are probably sure to be uh, ready for the uh, certification. Do you have an estimate in mind for type certification expectations yet? Or is it well, too early to say? Well, I, I would say it's too early to say, but we are aiming to um, get the type certification early 2030s. So that's our, our hope. A, a good mission to have early 2030s because yeah. I suppose one of the main differentiators that sets your aircraft apart from others is the hybrid gas it turbine is, yeah. that Honda has had from the outset unlike other competitors that mm -hmm. have maybe come to the hybrid concept later. Mm -hmm. What was Honda's thoughts in making that part of the design criteria from the very beginning of this iteration? You mean why we chose the yeah. hybrid system? Why did you choose to go hybrid right from the offset? Yeah, um, because we are an automobile company. We know the battery technologies. The battery technology is driven in the automobile market, right? And we kind of knew that how much the progress uh, of the battery is actually happen in, in the future. And when we decided to start this project, we kind of knew that the battery technology might not be there as, you know, as much as we had hoped. So. In the next 10, 20 years, uh, we, we thought that the, the hybrid system is a really practical solution for us. Of course, we are aiming to put the old batteries in the vehicle, and in, in the future, maybe the battery technology is there. Then we can do the same mission with the battery on board. But for the time being, I think the hybrid system is a really practical solution for us uh, if we would like to uh, move this electric path for the aviation. So not ruling out a fully electric version, but it's definitely not going to be the type that's going to enter service first. Yeah. We're going to have a hybrid mission yeah. in mind. Yeah, and if we can, we will. We may want to replace the, the hybrid system if the battery technology, you know, all come together, and that's that's quite possible. But the first stage of our development or our entering service. That, would, that should be the hybrid system. So what are the biggest challenges for you over the next coming couple of years then as you get your first prototype built mm -hmm. and starting entering testing? Well, next several years of the hybrid system in air is a really you know, challenge for us. And all the prior area system with hybrid system, nobody has done it yet. So that's definitely our challenge. And battery and the generators, it's not just uh, the hybrid system, but you have to look at both components all together. And that's a real challenge for us. And also the type certification is another stage of the difficulties. FAA has, you know, doesn't have the experience of the type certification of the hybrid system. So that's, that's, that's a so being, big amount being of being the first time. to be developing this hybrid system yes, yes. is going to, going to present extra additional challenges in terms of the type certification. Yeah, I believe so. In a, in a realm that is already, some might say, kind of underdeveloped area in terms of e-VTOL regulation in general. Yeah. So we, we started the discussion with the FAA, what kind of approach is, uh, should be you know, practical. And uh, FAA is uh, really keen on working with us. Uh, because this is uh, also a great time, great opportunity for them to you know, think about the hybrid system and the aircraft. And I suppose the proverbial million dollar question, why has Honda been so quiet in recent years, as you mentioned, the so-called stealth mode? Well, we... Working well, quietly in the background. Well, because every startup uh, has advanced so much, uh, we're kind of learning this vehicle. And we started this project maybe five, five, 10 years later than they did. And then, of course, we have the experience of the Honda Jet. But this vehicle is a brand new, that's totally different one. Um, so we kind of 
need a, a decent amount of running timing for us. And also we well do not have to you know proactively announce it to the public um, with a very immature of the state. But now we are you know confident in that our you know, technology is there, so it's a uh, great opportunity Step, for us. Stepping out of the shadows. Yeah. Well, I wish you every success over the next <laughs> coming years, and we're looking forward to seeing your first full-scale prototype aircraft yeah. flying. That will be America as well? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure learning more out of stealth mode and into the public eye here at Dubai, and we will catch up with you over the next coming Thank months. Thank you so much for Thank having you very an interest much. in us. Thank you so much. <laughs>